Good afternoon. Uh, let's continue from where we left off. We were talking about uh, exercise number 8, where we finally were able to equilibrate the gas, argon gas to 1 atmospheric pressure and uh, 300 Kelvin, right? I have actually, if you have taken a look at your model, I have actually uh, put up the entire set of about uh, 10 exercises, a couple of two of which we will be doing now or I will be talking about now. Each of these exercise folders will contain an input script and generally contain additional figures describing the variation of the energy and uh, uh, the temperature and the pressure. Okay. So, one of the things that I wanted to highlight in uh, exercise number 8, I do not know if you have actually seen these exercises, if you have gone through these input scripts, a lot of useful uh, methods of calculating different quantities are done. So, one of the things that I wanted to show you is, once it becomes uh, an ideal gas, we want to be able to verify whether the pressure times volume is in fact is equal to n times kb times right so what i have done here if you take a look at exercise 8 the current version of it and that's actually right there on the screen right now i have calculated various quantities right here so i have defined a pressure called i have defined a variable called pressure and then i have calculated the value pv and said a pv is equal to pressure times volume divided by some number here which is a factor which converts the pressure from bar to electron volts per angstrom cube right kb is assigned the number of atoms is assigned and then i am calculating the value of nkt which is num number of atoms times uh, the boltzmann constant times the temperature so you see the temperature is actually a variable that's already available in lamps so i don't need to put the dollar sign right then i also calculate other quantities like the potential energy and the kinetic energy here right um, or potential energy and the total energy both of which are measured with respect to the base potential energy of the system. You know, this, this these, these details I did not uh, talk about in the class, but if you take a look at the document that is there in the folder, it should be extremely clear. Okay. Then I am looking at the quantity PV minus MRT. So, I am just calculating the variable PV minus variable NKT and I am as the simulation is running here in the NVE ensemble, I am actually also printing out that variable here right in the thermostyle i am printing in addition to the uh, usual step time temperature etc i am also printing variables which are shown as v underscore p e n e r and this p e n e r is nothing but the variable defined here which basically computes the current potential energy minus a base the potential energy of the system after just after minimization okay i have just stored the potential energy just after the minimization and I am subtracting the current potential energy from that base uh, potential energy uh, so that I can see how the energy is actually distributed amongst the energy actually distributed as a function of time of the entire system. And these, this quantity is what I want to look at now, which is basically the quantity PV minus NRT. And I have run the entire simulation just like how we did previously. And if you take a look at it, this is how it is going to look. Okay. So, what is happening here is exercise 8 basically consists of about a total simulation time of about 93 picoseconds, out of which the first 3 picoseconds is simply some NVE simulation, and then the next 10 picoseconds is um, a NPT simulation making an attempt to change the temperature and the pressure of the system which did not succeed right and then you have another 10 picoseconds where i did some nvt to bring the temperature up to 300 kelvin then uh, another set of nve simulations to see if it had indeed reached 300 kelvin following that i did another npt simulations for a very long time for about 30 picoseconds and during this time something interesting started to happen you see that the total energy which is the blue curve increased, the kinetic energy became equal to the total energy and the potential energy of the system became 
is zero, right? Which means it's like an ideal gas, right? There is absolutely no potential energy in the system. And then when I did the remaining NVE, the kinetic energy, all the energy is just kinetic energy, which is what is expected in the in the, in the ideal gas. And then the potential energy of the system is zero. Okay, so. It is very clear that starting from a very, very uh, configuration that is extremely far away from what we wanted, like uh, we wanted 300 Kelvin and one atmosphere, but we started off at some uh, extremely high pressure and uh, we have done several steps to actually bring the system to uh, the state that we require it to be in. Okay. Uh, now, I have plotted the quantity PV minus NKBT, which is in thousands of electron volts again as a function of time over the various chunks of the simulation okay so initially it's having really weird values because it's not a, it's not a gas pv is equal to not t need not be satisfied right but as you keep changing these things finally i have a value pv minus nkbt oscillating about zero the zoomed version of this nve period is actually shown here you can see that it is oscillating about 0. So, PV minus NKBT is uh, calculated and it is satisfied uh, as expected. Okay. Um, so, in this manner, I mean, the, 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 the use of the variables is, I have just used it to illustrate PV minus NKBT, but you can imagine using it for various other things. For example, Sometimes you might want to calculate every time what you are interested in in statistical mechanics are the average quantities. What is the average pressure? What is the average temperature? Right. So, you could use these variable commands to actually calculate the average pressure, calculate the average volume and all these things um, right here in the script instead of post processing after uh, you run the simulation. Of course, you should be careful about the time because every time you have such variable commands, it is going to consume some time to actually do this. Okay. Another thing that I have done here is, Sir, yes. The NV is starting after the variables have been Yeah. Printed. Yeah. So Correct. The NV simulation here, the, the final one, right? The final one. The so Yes, is NV. Yes. It is starting after the variables have been defined. Yes. Uh, but labs execute step by step. Yeah, so there will be, so, but it is after the minimize and all that. So, it can still ca have a bunch of atoms and it knows how to calculate the pressure from the current values of the positions and the velocities. So, it will calculate whatever pressure it wants to calculate and give it to this variable PR. Right. And Secondly, you should understand that although I have defined a variable here, that variable changed. So, once I flagged that calculations to be taking place, it will continue to take place throughout the simulation. That is why even though PV minus NKT is defined on top, if I am saying thermo style and ask it to print out this information V underscore PV minus MRT, it is doing this for the entire simulation. It is just, it is it's, it's flagged that variable, that, that variable you can imagine, imagine it as that particular calculation has been ticked as on. So, it should continue to do it throughout the entire simulation. That is the way you should look at it. Yeah. Whenever it sees run, it will run whatever is there above it. No, whatever whatever flags have been switched on are the are the details that it is going to keep in mind while it is performing that run, unless you switch it off explicitly. That is why I always unfix it, stop doing it, so that it kind of switches it off before you before it goes on to the next part of the program. Okay, so that is the way it works. Uh, is this okay? Definition, see these definition of variables and all you have to practice and try a little bit, you know, unless you have tried with a simple script, 
thought about a problem try to see if i am able to get something that makes sense you you are not going to understand how this variable actually works okay so this is just a simple demonstration we will see something else now we will see what is referred to as another thing that i have done in exercise uh, 8.1 at equilibrium okay suppose we are talking about the system at equilibrium so we know that at equilibrium the velocities of the speeds of all the atoms in the system must actually have a certain profile basically it must have the boltzmann's distribution right so this is actually the probability this expression is actually an analytical expression probability that your velocity is this um and you can show using kinetic theory of gases or using statistical mechanics that this is in fact the expression that that turns out and what i have done is i have now obtained these calculated these velocities and averaged them over time so basically in the nbe run i am calculating the velocities of each and every atom okay and summing them all up over the entire duration of the run and then plotting a histogram to see whether the distribution is similar to what i get at equilibrium okay so that that exercise basically is used to demonstrate what is referred to as our compute command and fix average per atom command so let's spend a little bit time on this everything is exactly the same as in exercise 8 here okay so uh, nothing on the top is actually varying everything is exactly the same i've just copied the same input file except that now i have not done all those calculations that i needed to show that uh, pv is equal to mrt okay other than that everything is the same but here just before i start running the last final leg of the nve i am defining a compute okay the compute command compute is basically the keyword vel is basically the id of the compute which i am going to use to refer to it later on in the script all is basically the group of atoms over which i want to calculate it and then i say that the computed property is a property that is defined per atom so compute has various different kinds you can do a lot of computations here okay so compute id is id name of the compute uh, group id is basically the group of atoms over which we want to carry out this compute and then the style okay style is one of a list of possible style names see below so this is the huge number of computations that you can actually perform here what i want to perform is i want to calculate the velocities of all the atoms okay so compute um, this arguments can be anything so i am looking at compute per atom right i am ca calculating the uh, uh, i am interested in a property per atom so i go here click property per atom and then these are the various attributes that i can actually perform the calculation or get the calculation i can calculate vx vy and vz which is basically the velocity is x component y component and the z component of the velocity but it has so many other things that also that you can do okay for various reasons i i, I can't imagine the entire spectrum of uh, instances where you would need all of these but um uh, it depends on the problem that you are interested in so for example right now i wanted to plot the velocity distribution so i am going to first calculate the velocities vx vy vz so what does that do that simply calculates the velocities vx vy vz and it that is available in the compute vel right now what i need to do now is is not enough if i just calculate it for one time one snapshot i know all the velocities what i want to do is to get good statistics i want to average the velocity of say atom i over the entire nv run velocity of atom 2 over the entire run and then print out in a file the average vx vy and vz of every atom 
okay uh, of every atom after averaging it over the entire run okay so that involves a little bit of a trick here so first i did some checks in order to make sure that i was understanding whether uh, this compute is whether this average is actually working so we use what is referred to as fix average per atom so this is basically the style name average per atom is a style name always the second thing is the id that i would use in order to refer to it later on in the script all is basically a group of atoms and then this is something that you have to think carefully and give okay so this basically specifies uh, how frequently do you want to calculate the averages how many inputs do you want to take from the run in order to calculate the averages and um, how frequently do you want to repeat this calculations these are the kind of information that will go in fix average atom command so you can go here i will explain how this works so the average velocity for a certain atom isn't it calculated from the run itself so the sum of all the velocities at each time step divided by the Correct. total time yes so total sum of all the velocities every time divided by total number of time steps yes So, so, so you are running, you are running this entire step for ten thousand, ten thousand steps. Do I, I can, I am, it, uh, Lamps gives me additional control to decide whether I want to use the, uh, the velocity component, velocity x, say, let's say v x, v x component of atom one, at instance, at time step one, time step two, time step three, time step four, time step five, time step ten thousand, add them all up and divide by ten thousand, or I want to use. Uh, the uh, information at time step one, time step three, time step five, time step seven, time step nine, so on, divide by five thousand, or do I want to do it in a different frequency? So that frequency and all those things, number of times, um, how you want to do it is specified by those three numbers. So uh, those three numbers are here. It's n every n repeat and n frequent. n frequent okay so n every is use use the input values every this many time steps okay it can be little hard to understand this i will give you an example and then it will be, become clear okay n repeat number of times to use input va input values to calculate the averages and calculate averages every this many time step and you can list one or more input values can be listed here okay so what i want to do so a good if you want to understand this clearly just take a look at the example that's right here so if n every is 2 n repeat is 6 and n frequency is 100 then from 100 the last six values with two skipped will be taken into account in order to perform the average and it will print out the average after the 100th time step or in uh, multiples of 100 n repeat is 6 so 100 so how many how many things you are taking 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 5 6 i am taking six snapshots and they are all taken every two times you have a gap of two okay and then n frequency is 100 so if you are running your simulation for 200 you will have one set of uh, average being printed out at the end of 100 steps but for that 100 it would only take 100 98 96 94 92 and 90 steps to calculate the average and then from 200 it would again take 200 198 196 194 192 and 190 to calculate the second average so you have in your output file once you output this you will have two averages being printed out what i wanted to do is i wanted to average it over the entire spectrum of runs so obviously n frequent c would essentially be the total number of steps for which i am running okay n repeat would be as many data points as there are would again be 10000 or 10 or whatever i want it to be and this would be one because i want every thing to be counted okay now this is a little complicated right so we need to check whether what what lamps is doing and what we think it is doing is actually correct sometimes the uh, 
manual can be a little bit difficult to understand. So, it is a good idea to make some quick checks to see if that is what uh, it is doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's not what it means. So, here is if your total number of steps is every yes, you are specifying the step itself exactly. Okay, that is how it is working. So, uh, let us take a look at the example here. Okay, a simple example. Like I said, if I want to check something in LAMS, I run everything for one step to make sure that everything is, all the commands are specified properly. Okay. I am just going to say that how many steps have actually passed since I started simulation. So, let us do a uh, grep run ok. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 steps are there. Okay. So, okay. and then there is, uh, there are actually 6 steps including the step that we used for uh, our uh, minimization. I do not know why that is not turning up. So, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, so what you have to give here? So, I do not know why this is 16, it should be 15, but anyways, if there are say 5 steps before this, the step that it starts printing, so it starts printing from 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 6 to 10 steps, ok, after at, at the end of this it will be 5 and then it will start printing 6 to 16 steps, which are actually 10 steps, I am going to run it only for 10 steps, so it is correct, ok. So, until here it has finished 5 steps, run 1 is occurring 5 times and then it is going to start printing this dump for about for only one atom. I am just doing it for one atom because I just want to see if I am able to add up the velocities and it averages out correctly. So, I have in the previously I defined a new group called atom atom 2 which contains only the atom 2 and I am going to perform that uh, calculation only for that particular atom here. So, I am just going to print uh, the velocities Vx, Vy, Vz okay. and then for every step and then I am going to say that you calculate my average starting from 16th step for all the 10 steps at a frequency of 1. So, it is running for Rn step is basically equal to 10 here. So, what is going to do is it is going to take 16, 15, 14, 13, uh, 12, 11, 10 and add them up and store them in the file dump average dot dump ok. And this is the manner you actually specify what you want to print out. So, this is a fix id which performs this calculation and this is the manner you print out that information. So, this is the average x velocity, this will contain the average y velocity, this will contain the average z velocity over these last 10. Uh, uh, steps for this particular atom 2. So, I did that in an excel file uh, just to convince myself that, that that was the way it worked. Yes, because a compute is referred to by C underscore, a fix is referred to by F underscore variables are referred to by v underscore or dollar within uh, flower brackets ok. So, once you do this, so what I am trying to show you here is r gone exercise is 8.1 averaging process. So, including the first one which I do not want to average the velocities of atom 2 are uh, uh, in the um, uh, this is the 16th, 15th, 14th, 13th, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. From here it should start 
summing or averaging okay and these are the values that I obtained from the dump file for the velocities of this atom 2 okay and this average is therefore calculated over these 10 samples and it turns out to be 1.458764. Now we can open our, I do not know whether I have that here. Yeah. For just that atom, if you look at the average that LAMS has calculated, the uh, z velocity z is 2.5681 and v2 is 1.8487424 and vx is exactly the value that we basically wanted. 1.45877 and 1.45877. So, what we think it is doing by giving those numbers uh, and what it is actually doing match. So, essentially we have understood what this command does well. So, this test is ex extremely important to perform otherwise you will not understand what this n repeat n every and n frequency actually does. Okay. Yes. Like and N frequency, absolutely. Yes. This is how you can average the properties. Now, what you have done is you have averaged the properties of every atom. This is fixed average per atom. Per atom quantities are being averaged. In this manner, you can average any per atom quantity. This is just an example of velocity, but say for example, you wanted to average the pressure, you can calculate the pressure per atom and average it properly. Yeah. So, so uh, when, we, when we put 16 here, yeah. we, we include the fact that we had done some small runs in the beginning and then yes. calculate them after that and put it in. Yes. But suppose we are running this for like another 1000 steps, so yes. we still input at 32, 48 and so on, isn't it? Like this N frequency would mean that, so we saw in the example that it was 100 and it would, it would appear at 200. Yes, correct. So, here again it will go to 32. No, because I, because my, sim, but that particular part of simulation stopped at 10. But, but if, it, if it did, yes, it would. It would repeat every yes, 16 steps. Yes, it would repeat every 16 but steps. Here we could that was my aim, that is why I did it like that. Yes, if you, if you, if you did this. Um, If you gave here not 8 or if this was actually 32, if this was 20, okay, this was 20, then this can be every or 40 maybe, say 40, you will get two averages, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand why is that necessary because we are specifying the fixed number of time steps using the run command, right? So if we are specifying run thousand, it should stop after thousand. That is not the way it works. It doesn't stop after no. thousand. No. No. Then what, why are you specifying thousand? So that I wanted to run that fix for about thousand. No. If, if it is not stopping even at thousand, means no, no, no. It is not. It's not stopping at thousand. It will run this at 1000, it will run something for 1000 steps, but these fixes are still switched on. So, if you continue to run another 1000, it will also run that if you did not unfix it. Yeah. Then we unfix it and start another fix NBT. Yes. So, before fix NVT, if I do not write unfix, what will happen? It is running that NVE for some more time because you have one more run here. It is equal to saying this, right? Uh, fix NVE, run 10,000, run 10,000. That is what it means. So, it will run NVE or NVT? Whatever, any, anything, anything if you run. If you run it without unfixing, it will run 10 first. Yes. And Yes, 20. Yes. So, do not do it. You do not want that. See, I, 
you can experiment with these things. I have not done that. Okay. All these combinations of how many runs to give. To me, it makes logical sense to actually unfix something because there is a physical meaning to that. Right. So, I do not want that to be, I do not want that fix to be applied to those set of atoms anymore. So, I just stopped doing it. So, let us look at it from that perspective. If you, why do not you try, just give 10, 20, 20, 30 and see what happens. I do not know what happens actually.